Good morning, everybody. It's Miss Adair here. And um, so we just finished reading chapter 22, where we learn about Stargirl's happiness wagon that she has, and that she keeps track of all of her pebbles, and um, how this is probably the happiest she's ever been, that she's been spending this time with Leo. Uh, we also learn about her uh, doing lots of nice things and trying to do a, an, a biography for her neighbor, the little five-year-old boy, Peter Sinkowitz, um, that, you know, you think back and that would be pretty cool to have some, some photos of yourself just on everyday life. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how Stargirl and Leo's relationship continues, but let's go ahead and read chapter 23. So chapter 23, those were the best of times when we were alone, together, out of school. We took long walks around town and into the desert to her enchanted place. We sat on park benches and people watched. I introduced her to banana smoothies. I borrowed the pickup and drove us to Red Rock in Glendale. On the weekends, we drove to Archie's. On his back porch, we talked about a thousand of things and laughed and swooned in pipe smoke and ate pizza. She presented her oratorical speech to Senor Seguaro. We never spoke of the shunning. I loved weekends. But Mondays always followed Sundays. And the shunning, it was clear now, had come to me. It was less absolute for me than it was for her, but it was there. I saw it in the eyes that shifted away from mine, the shoulders that turned, the chatter that seemed less loud around me that now than it had before. I fought it. I tested its limits, in the courtyard, in between classes, in the lunchroom. I called out to others, just to see if they'd respond. When someone turned and nodded, I felt grateful. If, I, if someone spoke to me, especially if I had not spoken first, I wanted to cry. I had never realized how much I needed the attention of others to confirm my own presence. I told myself that the shunning was more painful for me than for Stargirl. I told myself that she was too busy being herself to notice that she was being ignored, and in fact, she continued to give birthday people a ukulele serenade and to decorate her desk and distribute assorted kindnesses. I told myself that even if she did notice, she wouldn't care. I understood why this was happening to me. In the eyes of the student body, she was a part of my identity. I was her boyfriend. <clears throat> I was Mr. Stargirl. Students said things, not to me, not directly, but tuned for me to overhear, even as they pretended I was nowhere near. They said she was a self-centered spotlight hogger. They said she thought she was some kind of saint. I cringed at that. And what at that she was so much better than the rest of us. They said she wanted everybody else to feel guilty for not being as nice and wonderful as she was. They said she was a phony. Most of all, they said the, that she was the reason why the Mica Electrons were soon to become Arizona State basketball champions. Oh, sorry. Most of all, they said that she was the reason why the Mica Electrons were not soon to become state basketball champions. Kevin had been right. When she started cheering for the other teams, she did something bad to her own team. To see one of their own priming the opposition did something to the team's morale that hours of practice could not overcome. And the last straw, everyone seemed to agree, was the Sun Valley game, when Stargirl rushed across the court to help Kovac, the Sun Valley star. All of this was affirmed by our own star, Ardsley himself, who said that when he saw a Mica cheerleader giving comfort to the enemy, the heart went out of him. She was why they had lost the next game to, so miserably to Red Rock, and they hated her for it. They, let, they would never forgive. Unlike Stargirl, I was aware of the constant anger of our schoolmates, seething like snakes under a porch. In fact, I was not only aware of it, but at times I also understood their point of view. There were even moments when something small and huddled within me agreed with it. But I would, not, I would see her smile and then take a swan dive into her eyes and the bad moment would be gone. I saw 
I heard, I understood, I suffered. But whose sake was I suffering for? I kept thinking of Signor Seguaro's question. Whose affection do you value more, hers or the others? I became angry. I resented having to choose. I refused to choose. I imagined my life without her and then without him, and I didn't like it either way. I pretended it would not always be like this. In the magical moonlight of my bed at night, I pretended she would become more like them, and they would become more like her. And in the end, I would have it all. Then she did something that made pretending impossible. That's the end of chapter 23, guys. We'll see you for chapter 24. I hope you guys are enjoying the book. See you soon.